Mr. President. The Senator from Vermont. Mr. President, uh, first I want to commend the senior senator from Florida for what he said. I have, throughout my career, I have been so impressed and so grateful for his strong voice on the environment. After all, he's the only member of this body who has seen Earth from space. And Mr. President, uh, I thank my dear friend, the senior senator, when I was in the grass, he was going to speak, but as so I could go ahead, and I will. I'll be brief, Mr. President. I just want to say, in the 44 years I've served in the United States Senate, I've never been so concerned about the state of press freedom around the world, including, I deeply regret to say, in our own country. I was brought up in a family that owned a weekly newspaper, owned a printing business, spoke of the First Amendment as being the most important part of our Constitution because it promised freedom of speech, promised diversity of religion, uh, and that promises a democracy. But the premeditated murder and dismemberment of Jamal Khashoggi by Saudi authorities, and in their ridiculous, ridiculous, transparent attempt to cover it up, have shocked the consciences of people everywhere. Yesterday, by voting to discharge Senate Joint Resolution 54, the Senate showed that the Saudi royal family needs to hold accountable all those responsible for that horrific crime if it wants to ever salvage relations with the United States. Look what is happening, Mr. President, if we don't stand up and speak out. Just a few days after Mr. Khashoggi's murder, the body of Bulgarian journalist Victoria Marinova was discovered. Investigations suggest she was raped and beaten and strangled. And I think the motive is pretty clear. She has spent the past year reporting on corruption. At least 43 journalists have been killed for their work so far in 2018, according to the Committee to Protect Journalists. Fifteen other journalists have also been killed, although their deaths have not, at least not yet, been officially linked to their work. And according to data compiled by Freedom House, the muzzling of journalists and independent news media is at its worst point in over a decade. Similarly, according to the Committee to Protect Journalists, the number of reporters jailed for their work, jailed for being reporters, is at a level not seen since the 1990s. Strong men around the world are cracking down with impunity. And frankly, this son of a printer, this son of a newspaper owner, is not surprised. At home, President Trump regularly demonizes the news media. He calls the news media the enemy of the people hoping that his acidic outbursts and threats will dissuade journalists from accurately reporting on his administration. With the eyes of the world upon him, he makes a mockery of the entire notion of an independent press, something that we had guaranteed from the first part of our country in our Constitution. The president makes a mockery of that. He brands anybody who challenges him as either liars or worse while holding hands with those willing to sing his praises. He even went so far as to rescind the credentials of one reporter who persisted in asking questions the president didn't like. I've been here with eight different presidents. I've never seen that done before, not even at Watergate. And a few days ago, he publicly denigrated the decorated retired U.S. Admiral, the man who led the raid that killed Osama bin Laden, who had dared criticize the president's attacks against the press as a grave threat to democracy, which it is. So this man who avoided the draft five times, this president avoided the draft five times, denigrates the admiral who led the charge that got Osama bin Laden. Now, as Americans who cherish the First Amendment, 
who rely on a free press for sustaining our democratic form of government, we should be appalled. The words of a president matter, they always have, but this president's rhetoric gives comfort to autocrats the world over who are emboldened to clamp down on dissent, confident that they have a powerful defender in the United States as they censor and jail journalists. We have seen despots quote our president. Can you imagine? We Americans see despots in other countries quote our presidents about this. We see them pass laws outlawing so-called fake news, which their leaders use to justify dismissing and castigating reporting with which they degree, disagree and to be able to persecute their political opponents. We should fear the day when a free press is seen as unimportant or a luxury, as something no longer synonymous with this country and our values. We must, all of us, all of us recommit ourselves to defending press freedom and elevating and celebrating our free press as one of the cornerstones of our democracy. America should always protect the freedom of the press and not denigrate it just because our president, for the first time in history, demeans and tries to silence the press. We must stand up as the founders of this country and as every leader in this country up to now has done and defend a free press. And in this challenging time for press freedom around the world, the Committee to Protect Journalists honored four exceptional journalists at the 2018 International Press Freedom Awards in New York City. One, Amal Khalifa Idris Abadi is the co-founder of the Sudanese Journalist Network, which has covered protests and official wrongdoing in Sudan, whose leader, President al-Bashar, has been indicted by the International Criminal Court. Because of her reporting, She's been harassed and detained, physically abused by Sudanese authorities, but she still does her job at great personal peril. Anastasia Stanko is an independent broadcast journalist who was taken hostage by an armed group while reporting on the conflict in eastern Ukraine. Since her release, she has continued to risk her safety and her life by reporting on the war and on other human rights violations by Ukraine security service in conflict-torn areas. Luz Malay Reyes, investigative reporter who founded an independent news website to bring attention to the political situation in her country, Venezuela. In, two, in 2017, when she covered protests against Venezuela's president, Nicolas Maduro, members of her team were attacked and threatened. But she courageously continued her work she since emerged as one of Venezuela's most recognizable champions for independent journalism. And lastly, Nguyen Ngoc Cu Quen, one of Vietnam's most prominent independent bloggers, has devoted her life to calling attention to human rights violations in Vietnam. In October 2016, she was sentenced to 10 years in prison on charges of propagandizing against the state. After her health began to deteriorate, she was released from prison, but only on condition of exile. Now, we often speak out about the abuse of repressive governments around the world. We must also speak out against the increasing attempt to demean and intimidate the press here at home. The President may continue to do that, as some of these people do in these other countries. We should not stand for that. America was built on the idea of freedom of the press. And if the president won't defend the freedom of the press, we should. And the lives of these four brave individuals should remind us of what is at stake, of the slippery slope we're on, and to stand up for what is right, even when our president will not. Mr. President, I yield the floor.